Welcome back to Denver and the 182nd annual meeting of the Acoustical Society of America. People with hearing aids and other assisted listening devices often struggle at crowded events. I know I do, even though I don't have a listening device, I have a struggle at crowded events. Because there's so many different sources of sound that make it difficult for me to actually pick out the one that I want to listen to. Ryan Corey from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign will discuss how he's trying to convert hearing aids into noise-canceling devices. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much, Larry. Um, I'm Ryan from Illinois, and uh, I'll be talking about uh, using broadcast systems as noise cancellation systems. So the challenge I'm trying to address is listening in noisy environments. Uh, and as we heard uh, from some of the previous presenters, it can be uh, difficult to understand speech in loud background noise, like a restaurant or a conference poster session where there are a lot of people talking. And it's especially difficult if there is background music, like at a party or a bar uh, where the music is just turned up too loud. Uh, it's really hard to do anything about the other people talking in the room. I'm working on it, but it's actually easier to do something about that sound system. So in this talk, I'm going to focus specifically about removing um, unwanted noise that's coming over a sound system. So unlike a lot of hearing aid research that's about isolating the person you're talking to, this is about preserving everything except one sound. So what comes out of this system should be uh, the same as what you would hear through your ears, but without the background noise uh, from the system. So what I propose to use to do this is a tool that's designed to do exactly the opposite, uh, a wireless assistive listening system. So these are personal devices that um, people with hearing aids or cochlear implants can use and clip onto a teacher. They're also used in performance venues, uh, like if you go to see a play, uh, you can check out this headset. Um, and there are different types of these. And their purpose is to improve intelligibility for something that's far away um, or when there's a lot of noise. And they work very well at that. But we can also use them to do the opposite and cancel out the sound that's coming over the speakers. So in this system, I take an off-the-shelf uh, wireless assistive listening system, which uses uh, frequency modulation broadcast. Um, it transmits what's coming over uh, the speaker system to the hearing device. Uh, an adaptive filter uh, matches the room acoustics. So it's trying to predict what the sound from the speakers sounds like at the two ears. And then it can subtract it off from what the hearing aid microphones are picking up. So I'll show you a demonstration. Um, you'll be listening through the ears of this dummy head in the front of the video. There are some microphones clipped on it that simulate listening devices. Sound will be coming over the speaker next to me and transmitted by this FM system. This is a wireless assistive listening system, like the kind used in theaters, lecture halls, and other venues. It transmits the sound being played over a sound system to a headset worn by the listener, making that sound easier to hear from far away. But sometimes we'd rather not hear what's coming over the sound system, like loud music at an event that makes it hard to have a conversation. We can repurpose the assistive listening system to remove the sound instead. A selective noise cancellation system removes the music at the listener's ears, but lets other sound through so that you can still hear me talking, but with less background noise. So in this demonstration, which was in a very controlled environment, um, we managed about 10 to 15 decibels of noise reduction, which as you can hear, sounds quite good, very intelligible. Um, and so I, I think this seems like a promising strategy. Uh, there, will be, there will need to be more work done to make it more practical outside the laboratory, uh, particularly dealing with motion and reverberation. Um, and of course, the kind of economic issues of how do you convince a bar to install a system like this. Um, if you'd like to learn more, please come to my talk uh, tomorrow morning, and you can see more data and results. And if you'd like to learn more about my other work, you can visit the Illinois Augmented Listening Laboratory website. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. I mean, that's really good stuff. I mean, uh, you could really tell a difference. 
The one thing I've learned today more than anything else is that 10 decibels is really a big dip in noise or increase in noise. Um, the examples that you had there, and talking about bars, obviously, and inside venues, would this be as effective on outside venues as well? Uh, I see no reason why not. It's uh, mostly a matter of how reverberant is the space that makes the signal processing more difficult. But as long as they have this sound system um, and a transmission system, um, fundamentally it should work anywhere. We have a question from the floor. Yeah, so is this just a kind of a clarifying question. Is this useful for just people with hearing aids or would this be useful if I went to a bar? Oh, this would be useful for anyone. Um, and the buzzword I like to use is augmented listening. So you could have your smart earbuds that have this technology built in and you put them in and it takes away the music and makes it easier to hear. And they could include other hearing enhancement technologies because these problems are by no means unique to people with hearing loss. Uh, everyone has trouble hearing in noise, uh, as we learn at conferences all the time. <laughs> Great, okay. And so for people with hearing problems or hearing aids, it, would this be a, an easy technology to implement on a hearing aid? That is a big sticking point, and um, I, I hope so. There are new wireless standards coming out, especially uh, Bluetooth low energy audio, that's just starting to be deployed into hearing aids. Uh, and also in consumer devices, and I'm hoping it makes its way into venue sound systems as well. Uh, and that could potentially make this very seamless. You just walk into a room and it turns on automatically. With commercial devices now, it would be uh, more of a challenge to implement because you would need systems to be compatible in ways that they aren't. And do you know what kind of the cost of something like this would be? Um, so the... A uh, broadcast system in the demo I used costs about $1,000. Uh, you can get much cheaper devices that don't work as well. I'll show a comparison in the talk tomorrow. Again, my hope is this will be something that's already built into sound systems that venues buy in the next few years, and so it would be you know, little or no cost to them. That's where I really think you'd get widespread adoption. Okay. And then we just have one more kind of clarifying question. So this has to be installed by a venue and then people would rent or bring their own kind of devices for themselves? Yes, so this um, technology would have to be implemented into the listing device. Okay. Is there a point where so many voices can become like music? Is there like a threshold where voices are easier to get rid of or? Um. So this system actually doesn't distinguish between speech and music. It um, knows what is being played over the speakers because of that broadcast. So what the system is doing is just removing whatever's coming over the speakers and leaving everything else. Could you put in like a white noise or pink noise filter and be like, whatever this is, filter it out? Uh, I don't think that would work. No, okay. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Maybe something to work on, who knows? A lot of my other work is about that problem. Okay. Um, I think that's it for over okay. here. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much, Ryan. I mean, it's obviously it's important to, to hear whatever we need to hear, but what we want to hear as well. So mm -hmm. that's an important thing. Um, we have one more presentation to go, and so we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back.